Okay, this is problem 34 from out of section 1-4, and the directions for this little set of problems say that we want to determine the values of constants a and b so that the function that we're looking at is continuous. Now this is a pretty intense looking function, it's a piecewise function. You have a component that's exponential, a component that's an inverse sign, and a component that's a parabola. What we want to do is we want to find the value of a, we want to find the value of b that make this function continuous. So in other words, we want the open circle where this exponential piece leaves off to be the, in the exact same location in the coordinate plane as the closed circle where this inverse sine piece picks up. And that has to be, you know, open circle from this one, same location as the closed circle from this one, zero comma something. We'll figure out what the something is in a minute. Uh, same thing can be said about the other break. We have another closed circle at the opposite edge of this at two comma something. We want the open circle where this one picks up to also be two comma the same something. So we want the open circles, the closed circles to end up in the same location so that if you thought about graphing this, you could graph it without lifting your pen or pencil from the page. Your limits would always exist no matter what value you're approaching. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start with the piece that we know all of. We know all of this middle piece, right? So I'm gonna isolate that first, and I'm gonna deal with zero first. I'm gonna deal with zero before I start dealing with the two. Um, so I'm gonna to try to figure out where my closed circle would be on the left edge of this portion of the graph. And I know that my x coordinate of this closed circle is zero. Right? It's zero comma something. What's the something? Well, the something is going to be found by taking the zero and putting it in for that x. So if we went ahead and we figured out what the inverse sine of zero over two was, that's basically just the inverse sine of zero. Uh, this is something that you might be tempted to kind of go to a calculator to help you figure out, but it is something that you can manage with the unit circle. Being asked to find, so I'm just going to kind of come up to the corner here and do a little bit of scratch work. Being asked to find the inverse sine of zero, so that's our question. If I take the sine of this side and the sine of this side of the equation, the sine and inverse sine will cancel out, and I'll just be left with zero. And then I'll have sine of something over here. We want to know what that something is. So if you use the unit circle to help you figure out this something, it says sine of some angle is zero. So on the unit circle, we've said that the, the y-coordinate at any point on this gives the value of sine of that angle. The y-coordinate is definitely zero right here. And the angle that we're at at that point on the unit circle is either 2 pi or zero. We'll keep with the simple one. We'll go with the zero. So this question mark is actually going to be the angle of zero. And we found that with the unit circle. If we wanted to figure out when sine was one, well, where's the y coordinate one? So we'd be here, that's an angle of pi by two. So if this was a one right there, then we could use the unit circle to determine that as well. But here it's going to be zero, so we're going to have a closed circle in the coordinate plane at zero comma zero. Now what exactly does this piece of the graph look like? Eh, we might not be entirely sure without a calculator, but that's okay. We should be able to place our circles, closed and open circles, inside of one another without necessarily knowing what each individual component of this graph should look like. I need the open circle that has a location of zero to also, for the x-coordinate, to also have a y-coordinate of zero, right? If I can make the open circle from this top piece of the function take on the exact same set of coordinates as this closed circle, it's gonna be closed circle inside the open circle, no break in the graph, no jump in the graph. We're gonna have a, a continuous transition from this piece of the graph to this piece of the graph. So. This top piece of the function is defined by a e to the x plus 1, right? I know that on this portion of the graph, I must have a, an open circle at 0, comma 0. So 0 would be my y value, 0 would also be my x value. Check out how simple this is. We're going to have to put this value in place of x. That also is going to have to be the y value, 0. And if we can solve this equation, we're going to have our value of a.
So if you subtracted 1 from each side of this, you'd end up with a minus 1. e to the 0 is just 1. So this is just going to say a equals 1. So we have our value of a. So if a is negative 1, the open circle for this top piece of the function will be in the exact same location in the coordinate plane as the closed circle for the middle piece of the function. Those circles will be at 0, 0. We want to do a similar thing with the other open and closed circles. So if I go back to the middle piece, I have another closed circle at 2 comma something. So if I go ahead and say, all right, my other closed circle has coordinates, oops, sorry about that. My other closed circle has coordinates 2 comma something. What's the something? Well, we can figure that out. We know that it's going to be on this portion of the graph. We know the x coordinate of it's going to be 2. I can figure out the missing y coordinate by taking that 2, putting it in place of x, and evaluating. So if I go ahead and I take the middle piece of the function, which is inverse sine of x, which I want a 2 in place of, over 2, that's going to boil down to the inverse sine of 1. And just like I said before, uh, up in this corner here, if I wanted to know the inverse sine of 1, I can take the sine of each side of this, and I need to use the unit circle to figure out an angle that goes here that gives me a result of 1 when I take the sine of it. So on this circle, where is the y coordinate 0? Since y coordinates on this circle represent the sine of the angle, well, the y coordinate is 1 right here at an angle of pi by 2. So what is the inverse sine of 1? Well, in this case, our question mark would end up equaling pi by 2. Okay. So we have a closed circle at 2 comma pi by 2. Inverse sine of 1 is pi by 2. So not a nice y value, but still one that we should be able to work with. So this piece of the function leaves off at 2 comma pi by 2. We need this bottom piece of the function to pick up with its open circle at 2 comma pi by 2. So I'm just going to copy this piece of the function down below here, x squared minus x plus b. I need my other open circle to share the exact same location in the coordinate plane as this closed circle so that we don't have to lift our pen or pencil from the page to graph this, so that we don't have any jump discontinuities or any breaks in the graph. So I know that my x coordinate is 2, my y coordinate is pi by 2. If I'm trying to find out what the value of b is, well I have an x that can go in place of these. I have a y that I need that to be equal to. I should be able to solve that for b once everything's plugged in. So 2 is going in place of x, 2 is going in place of x. We're looking for b. We know the y value or the location of this in the coordinate plane has to be pi by 2. And if you're trying to solve this, uh, just simplify on the left side first. 4 minus 2 is going to give you a 2 plus a b equals pi by 2. Subtract 2 from each side and you get your result for b. So you don't have an especially nice result, but you know it's, it's a valid constant. You know, pi by 2 minus 2. So a little tricky, number 33 and 35 are, are going to be similar to this. You're going to want to start by finding the location of either an open circle or a closed circle, and then try to make sure that all your other open and closed circles just kind of connect with each other so that you don't have any breaks in the graph as you move from one piece to the next to the next. Hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions.